What's up, everybody? Happy New Year's Eve. It's the last football weekend of 2016. Can't believe 2016 is already come and gone. But uh, man, it's a, a huge weekend coming up, particularly for my two favorite teams, which is why I'm wearing the dual gear here for my Washington Huskies, go dogs, and of course, my Seahawks playing tomorrow. The Huskies <clears throat> coming up here and just shortly, by the time I post this, they're going to be uh, game time as they get into the uh, playoffs here against the Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, I'll get into that in just a second. But first, a little bit of uh, Seahawks news. So for those of you guys who haven't heard yet, Michael Bennett finally. Uh, good news on the contract front after complaining for so long about his contract. He finally got the extension he was looking for. He's locked up for 2018 to 2020. A three-year deal, 300 and up to 31.5 million is what I'm reading. Uh, 16 million guaranteed in the first year of his contract. So he's finally, finally getting paid what he's worth. So I'm glad for him and his family and for the fact that all this time, although he was very vocal about his unhappiness with the contract, he never held out. Uh, he never dragged it into, he drug the issues into the uh, the season itself. So good, good to him that he, you know, stayed with the team, stayed loyal with the team, and stuck it out. And as the Seahawks have proven time and time again, you stick it out, you play well. Before your contract's up, they take care of you. And so I'm glad to see Michael Bennett will be here for a long time to do his pulse thrusting dance, and hopefully not. Keep it to two and not three thrusts so that he doesn't get uh, unsportsmanlike penalty. Um, anyway, so that's good news. All right, so uh, back to the football side of things. So the the Huskies, real quick on the Huskies, I know not all of you guys are Husky fans out there, but uh, they are big time underdogs to say the least going into this game against uh, Alabama. And, you know, even on the Seahawks side, I feel like the 12s are kind of down on the Seahawks right now after losing that game to the Cardinals. The injury, the brutal injury to Tyler Lockett. But I think being that it's New, Year, New Year's Eve, uh, I just want to take a moment to kind of appreciate this time as a fan, as both a fan of the Huskies and the Seahawks, because you know, you've got to have gone through some bad times to pre appreciate the good times and we're in the middle of some good times right now and you know i've been a fan of both teams more hardcore of the seahawks than of the huskies but the huskies being my alma mater i've always uh supported them and and uh wanted to see them do well and you know we've seen for those of you who follow either teams but you know even with the seahawks we've shared we've seen our share of you know really bad seasons and we've seen our share of good seasons mostly bad if you really look at the sum of things since the seahawks started back in the in the day you know the dogs uh under under coach don james they went to multiple rose bowls they were the national champions in 1991 the seahawks now have been in the playoffs five seasons in a row or will be five seasons in a row once the, once the playoffs start this year and but you know you look back don't have to go too far. Go back eight years ago in the 2008 season. The Huskies were 0-12, didn't win a game, and the Seahawks were 4-12 in the final year under Mike Holmgren. And, you know, that was some dark times. That was some, you know, not good to be a football fan uh, in Seattle at that time. And it, over the years, it seems like the Huskies and the Seahawks, it's rare that both teams have done well at the same time. It's always been like one or the other. But look at them now. You got the Huskies with a shot to make it to the national championship game if they can somehow pull a miracle off today. And the Seahawks, despite all that's happened and how negative things sort of feel right now, they still have a shot at the number two seed uh, if things go their way tomorrow. We have to take care of the 49ers. And if somehow the Saints can beat the Falcons in Atlanta, we could end up being the number two seed, probably the most flawed number two seed team, <laughs> you know, out there. But it could still happen. There's still a shot at it. And it's amazing that that's, that's a possibility, you know. Talking about this Husky game, since it's coming up real soon here. 
I have to confess, I haven't watched any Alabama football, so I really don't know what they look like. I, but I've read enough and heard all about their talent, their depth. They practically have like an NFL, soon to be NFL roster on their defense. And of course they win year after year. So it's it's obvious, it's clear why, you know, they, they are the, the clear, you know, see the Huskies are clear underdogs in this game. Can they pull off the up, upset? Can they shock the world with a win over Alabama? The answer to that is yes, there is a chance. I'm saying there is a chance. But to do it, they're gonna have to play their best ball ever, and they might have to play what's close to a perfect game for the Huskies. And that's gonna mean they've gotta protect the ball, can't turn it over, they've gotta get turnovers. They can't afford to get behind early because then you're just playing right into their hands. So they've gotta somehow get a lead, and that's gonna require some explosive plays, probably getting John Ross going early on in the passing game. And I think they need to be unpredictable because against this defense of Alabama, lining up and trying to just go smash mouth football, uh, I don't think it's going to work. They're too good for that, too, too fast for that. So you have to kind of mix it up. And I think the key is uh, Jake Browning in that passing game. So, and then of course, everyone's expecting they're going to run a trick play or two, you know, here or there. And I, I think it's going to happen. Who knows what the tricks are going to be up his sleeve, but when they do run it, they've got to hit a home run. They've got to, they've got to score. It's got to be successful when they do it, because, you know, if, if you don't, it's kind of like a demoralizing fail if it doesn't happen. So hopefully Coach Peterson's got this team ready and believing in themselves because nobody else is giving them a shot. So uh, we'll see. In, in a while, we'll, uh, we'll know the outcome of that game, but we'll be watching. It'll be fun to see what happens there. So. If they do that and they can keep it close in the fourth quarter, I think they can eke out a win. And maybe this would possibly be the greatest win in Husky history. If they can pull that off. So the pressure really, when I mean, you think about it, is on Alabama because since nobody's giving them a shot, uh, the Huskies a shot, all the pressure is on Alabama because they have to win this game because that's what is expected. And maybe that little bit of pressure and expectation is all that the Huskies need, that chance to get that victory. So now, let's go back to the Seahawks. Clearly, the Seahawks have not been playing their best football down the stretch like they usually do at the end of the season. They're inconsistent. They got big time injuries to key positions. Everyone knows about the offensive line. We've given up uncharacteristically big plays on defense, and we can't run the ball. And these are things that usually, you know, are fixed and not issues that we're having at this point in the season. So it's understandable why fans are a little bit down on, on the Seahawks and, you know, on their chances right now. And as we go into this game against the 49ers tomorrow, we're going, ag going against a team, a 49er team, which is bad, bad management, bad talent. Someone lightly lost so many guys. They're 2-13. Uh, but, yeah, oh, and the 49ers are also the last in the league in run defense. So... You know, you're, you got to be thinking the Seattle's got to have some success, some success running the football. <laughs> uh, Kaepernick has been usually uh, playing his worst football when he goes against the Seahawks. And so on paper, again, we should win this game. But I, it wouldn't surprise me if we start out, you know, like we did against the Rams or we did against the, the Cardinals, where we just start out, you know, with penalties and short-circuiting ourselves and potentially you know, falling behind early due to our own getting, you know, not getting out of our own way. Uh, we can't let that happen, you know. So uh, hopefully Seattle's fixed that. We've seen what they can do, they, they, what they did in the, in the second half against the Cardinals. And we need that team to show up. We need that, that team to show up every week now. So I don't think this game is going to be easy. I think people are writing it off a little too much. But I wouldn't. You know, Kaepernick has, has been playing well lately. Uh, hopefully the Seahawks don't underestimate these guys. And again, like Alabama, all the pressure's on Seattle because we're expected to win this game. So hopefully the Seattle's not looking past these guys because a right, nightmare situation would be the Falcons lose and then we... Anyway, I don't even want to say the words. I don't want to say the words. So <coughs> the 49ers have nothing to lose. We have everything on the line. So we have to win this game. And I believe we will win this game. I think Seattle will show up 
you know, last week, uh, hopefully will be sort of like a, a slap in the face wake up call as a final reminder that if you guys don't get your you know what together, uh, this is what could happen. So uh, I like to believe that Seattle's got their, their, their final shake up that tells them, you know, you need to execute. And I think then if they do that, they should take care of business this weekend. The problem with this game is for the, for the fans, for us, it's kind of a no-win situation in terms of the feel of the game. Because if we win big, everyone's just going to say, oh, well, it's the 49ers. We're supposed to kick their butt. If you barely win, then everyone's going to feel bad about it because they're going to say, oh, we barely got past a 2-13 and team. If we lose, well, geez, then the sky's falling and it's the end of the world as far as uh, you know, Seahawks fans are concerned. So, you know, it, it's, it, it almost feels like you can't really come out of this game with anything real positive in terms of feeling like you've turned things around, but you kind of have to, you know, and I think a lot of that is a byproduct of, you know, just what a lot of recent Seahawks fans have become. They've kind of become a little spoiled by this stretch of playoff Seahawks football. They've come to expect it now. You know, we've gotten our expectations raised and Russell Wilson has never not been to the postseason. And so, and when they do make it to the postseason, we've never gotten anywhere below the divisional round. We've always won and gotten past the first round, either via bye or beating the Redskins in 2012 or beating, um, just getting by the Vikings last year. So playoff success has kind of come to be an expected thing now. And, you know, both times we were in the playoffs on the road, we didn't make it. Both times we were at home with home field advantage throughout, we made it to the Super Bowl. You know, so a lot of rides on us trying to get that home field advantage, clearly. But with all that said, I think I just want to pause on this, being that it's New Year's Eve, at least in our part of the world, and take a moment to say thank you to the Seattle Seahawks and the Washington Huskies because you guys have given us meaningful football in December and January. You've given us something to believe in, to cheer for, and hope. Hope that we can still, there's something to play for, that that ultimate victory, that ultimate goal is still within our reach. And there's a lot of fans for a lot of other teams who don't have that, <laughs> you know? All they have to look forward to is next season or next year's draft. Um, we're one of the lucky teams that gets to keep moving on and still have a, sh uh, still have a shot, still have a chance. Um, there's a guy, there's a YouTuber out there, you know who you are, Arizona Animal, is what he calls himself. And he's probably now the number one trash talker on my YouTube channel. Took the place of what used to be the most annoying guy who was the Patriots fan who would write 2824 forever on, my, on every comment of every video. Arizona Animal has risen above He's probably number one, uh, enemy number one <laughs> on the, the Norbcam comment list. Uh, but this guy, uh, he can't stop gloating about that win last week. And uh, as annoying as he is, he has every right because they did go out and beat us. You know. But all I can say to you, Arizona Animal, is the one thing you don't get to brag about is you, you don't get to brag about being in the playoffs this year. We are in the dance. And once you get there, anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, our team has flaws. Yeah, we're struggling. Yeah, we don't have a running game. Our offensive line is not good for, you know, shying away from any really bad uh, adjectives. But you know what? That's what makes this upcoming playoff run that much more exciting, I think because we are now the underdog. We're not the number one or number two team in the power rankings. We've dropped, and I like that. I like that we're now being written off, overlooked, and I think the Seahawks play better when they are the underdog. Look at Super Bowl 48 when we won. Everybody was, was expecting the, the Broncos to just destroy us, and look what we did to them, all right? So I think it's plays to our advantage that we've kind of stumbled a little bit here because I think that's good for the, for the team internally and I think it's great as fans 
to see the rest of the world uh, doubting us once again because I think when it's that formula, uh, it makes it that much more, that much more sweeter. It's gonna make the run that much better. All right, so just to wrap it up, um, Seahawks, Huskies, chances to pull off miracles down the stretch today. If the Huskies can pull off the miracle of wins today, and if the Seahawks can somehow find a way to be playing football in February, who knows, this 2016, 2017 could become one of the greatest football seasons in Seattle history. Could happen. It's the playoffs. And when you make it to the playoffs, anything can happen, baby. Believe that. All right. Go dogs. Go hawks. And y'all have a safe and happy new year. And I'll talk to you guys next year. See ya.